Allison here again for a special entry to my audio journal on YouTube channel DIY Salvation. For years I put off reading Leah's book, Troublemaker as, believe it or not, as critical as I can be about the Church of Scientology, I usually avoid reading anti-Scientology material. My first reason is, little of what's in these materials tells me anything I don't already know. Though I never was in the Sea Org, like Leah, and I never became any sort of celebrity like her either, what she had to say aligned with what I already knew about the church, and is consistent with stories ex-Sea Org members told me about what that life was like, even when they were still card-carrying church members, just no longer in the Sea Org. So, even though I was not a witness to the play-by-play -play of the events she described in her book, at the same time I have no reason to believe there's anything inaccurate about the history with the church she describes. The second reason I usually don't read anti-Scientology materials in books or online is because it's all focused on staying away from the church, not doing Scientology, and very rarely do I hear any Scientology critics tell you what a good alternative would be. That, you could say, is what separates me from other Scientology critics, if you can even call me one. I'd rather just call myself an ex-Scientologist who is honest about the church, both the good and the bad, and most importantly, honest with myself. When you listen to me criticize the church, or anything else, I nearly always tell the person where they can go or what they can do to get what they were seeking in the first place, rather than leave them in a bitter confused state wondering what to do next. Whether or not you find Trom an acceptable alternative to Scientology or not, all I can say is that it's worked for me and I find it more than just a substitute. It's my conviction that it's better. So there you have it, my personal biases which I thought I'd get out of the way before I dug in with my comments. Leah begins with what I see as the best move she could possibly make. She beat the church to the punch as far as personal attacks. She laid it all out on the table about how she's done shameful things, her friends and family have done shameful things, and so on. But this serves a purpose that goes beyond deflating the church from attacking her personally because of her book and her TV show. It also says to the public that even though Scientology can help a person, it doesn't make them the perfect, superhuman individuals they want us to believe they make. Discrediting former members is a standard practice right out of the Scientology playbook. Yet, it apparently never occurred to Hubbard when he wrote that playbook, that when the church attacks its former members in such a way, it's practically an admission that their years of being involved with Scientology did nothing to straighten them out. Not exactly the best advertisement for your product if you're trying to sell the world on a program that supposedly produces happy, ethical human beings. So score another point for Leah on that one. At first, I felt Leah was focusing too much on irrelevant details of her life as far as Scientology is concerned and how bad she's trying to tell us it is. My attitude changed about that about halfway through the book. I realized that like any good author she was simply trying to paint a full picture of not only what Scientology is, but about who she is too. The descriptive, narrative style as opposed to the matter-of-fact tone she could have taken ended up serving me on a personal level, as I let go, through catharsis, a lot of similar upset I've been hanging on to over the Church of Scientology for decades. What's notable about Leah is that she didn't just pack up her bags and leave at the first sign of trouble. Nor did she the second. Or the third. Or the 247th. She was under the impression she could fix Scientology from within. That if she wrote enough reports, complained to the right people, and made sure to keep fixing herself, so to speak, that eventually everything would work out. This. I believe is the second biggest reason people stay in the church much longer than any rational human being would, ranking right below the belief that Scientology is mankind's only hope for spiritual salvation. She swore too much. She sounded a little too bitchy in parts, and I say sounded because I listened to the audiobook version she narrated herself. There were some criticisms she made of the Scientology technology itself, as opposed to the organization, that I disagreed with. Despite these minor annoyances, I enjoyed the book immensely. Because it provoked thoughts about the church that have sort of been lying at the bottom, and they surfaced so I could examine them. The most profound of these thoughts lies in this one question. At what point did I hand over my rights to the Church of Scientology? 
And by that I mean, when did the transition occur from my being a self-governing, free-thinking individual, who, was only limited by US law and generally accepted social customs, to someone who felt they had to do what the Church of Scientology told them to. Think on this. Scientology policy was not written by a duly elected government. It wasn't divinely inspired either. Policy is not the same thing as technology, as the Scientology technology is based on research, observation, experience, and most importantly, results. Policy is mostly a series of Hubbard's decisions about how to run his organization, and what he wants to mold the world into. And what's worse, as Leah thoroughly points out, and something many ex-Scientologists know, there's a double standard that should not exist but does anyway, of how high-ranking church officials aren't bound by policy but enforce it on those below them with a vengeance. Leah also got me to wondering if David Miscavige really is what's wrong with the church. Because she said that even if he were dethroned, someone just as bad would come in and take his place. I do believe that's possible. Another thought-provoking point to consider, is it that the people at the top of Scientology are just corrupt, or is there some fundamental flaw in the way the whole thing is structured and written up that nearly guarantees that the reality of the Church of Scientology and the Sea Org is so much different than the face they show to the public? I think these talking points are something every ex-Scientologist should consider, and reading Leah's book inspired me to examine every one of them with ruthless scrutiny. Thanks for writing your book, Leah. You truly offered me something above and beyond the typical Scientology bashing I've been exposed to, before, during, and after my involvement with the church. I'm Alison Tandry. Thanks for your time today. We are DIY Salvation. Don't just use your mind. Resolve it.